I've been asked to talk about the costs of creating an online business. So uh, given the first talk that was given, I guess I could, we could treat this as a, a specific example of those um, guidelines that were given in the first talk, which I, I found very interesting. Um, when I was asked to do this talk, I asked, my, uh, I, I asked myself, well, what can I say uh, that could be of advice to other business savvy people in this room? And um, I quickly came to the conclusion that really the only useful way of putting across a message is to start from my experience, of our experience in building up this business. Um, and in doing so, I will explain the insights, possibly the pitfalls that we had to, we had to avoid. So I hope you don't find it too boring, slightly entertaining. I quickly whipped together this presentation, but um, I hope you'll find there's some useful content nevertheless. It starts with a very marketing type slide. So while that's going on, I'll explain who we are and how we started. So Lambda Tech, we're an online reseller. We sell electronic goods, as you can see, are popping up on this window. Um, we literally started in our front room. And um, I was at the time in full-time employment elsewhere. Helena uh, was pregnant with our second child. And uh, the idea of, I, I'm a bit of a techie guy. I have a, I, um, I'm a mathematician by trade, in fact. And um, it always inspired me and interested me how we could use web technologies and internet technologies to develop a business, in particular develop a business from home. Now, seven years ago, that was still a fairly novel idea. I know the internet had been around for some time, but uh, nevertheless, it did still, in 2005, it still felt quite novel to be able to use internet technology to build a business from home. Um, so, in light of that, how did we do it? Well, uh, as it says on the slide, we did it all in-house. So, if I were to answer the question, how much did it cost you to do? Well, nothing. Literally, we started from scratch. And uh, based solely on my um, toolbox of knowledge or programming and mathematical tricks I'd learned in my trade. Um, so, the way we did it is the hard way, really. And seven or eight years ago, the hard way was pretty much the only way you could use. So you had to be a programmer of some sort, um, and you had to have the patience and the time to set up this, uh, these systems, which I'm about to outline and explain what is involved. The alternative, of course, is to give this, outsource this to a developer. But then again, he would have had to have the same time to do this. So, what I should do is, um, following on with, with the, um, the philosophy of showing a concrete, uh, a concrete application, a concrete business, uh, let's go over what is required to set up an online <coughs> e-commerce shop. Now, some of these things are pretty obvious, and I'm, by look, looking quickly at the audience in this room, I would have thought that these uh, various points are, are fairly obvious. But let me go through them step by step, because there are some hidden, um, some hidden features. So clearly, the first thing you do, the first thing I did, is to develop a website. So there's a front end, and uh, um, I chose to do it myself uh, uh, from scratch, but uh, there are many people who could design a nice front end for you, I guess. Um, so the next thing to do, once you've created your online shop, your online shop is actually empty. There's no products in it. You're going to have to fill it up with products. And you're going to have to do it in a convenient fashion. Now, the previous speaker already mentioned content management systems. But uh, you've got no choice. If you're starting from scratch, you're going to have to implement some form of content management system. And what is a content management system? It's pretty much a convenient way of adding products to your shop. Um, and to manage the inventory. So when you run out of stock or something, you can just conveniently go into an interface and say, I've got zero stock of this now. And the website automatically updates. Um, that's fine. So once you've got those two elements, um, you've got a website with, which has products on it. But now 
you need the functionality to make the website work. You, you need to allow people to buy products from your shop. So the next thing that I needed to do seven years ago is phone the bank and get myself a merchant account. Um, in those days, actually, it was relatively easy. Ironically, it's becoming more complex now to get a merchant account. I'll explain why in a second. Um, so the merchant account is effectively a number that the bank gives you which authorizes you uh, to take card payments from customers. And uh, whatever card payments you take, they will be put into your bank account of your, you know, of your choosing, or your business bank account. OK, now you've got this merchant number, but how are people going to input their credit card details on your website? You still need to do that bit, right? So you need to sign up with some payment gateway. Now, luckily, already seven years ago, uh, the technology of taking payments on websites was pretty much established. So um, there are many companies out there uh, which provide a the interface for you so that customers can put their card details in and they can manage all the technicalities and magically put the money that your customer gives to you via his credit card into your account, uh, usually the following day. Um, so in our particular example, we started by integrating by using Sage Pay. Uh, it's called Protex at that time, but they seem to be the cheapest and most popular provider in the UK. So, um, and we've we stuck with them ever since. So Sage Pay, I repeat, is really only a go-between, an interface between you and the bank. Um, our customers, when they come onto our website, when they press the pay button, they get redirected to the Sage Pay payment acceptance page, and they put their card details in there. And when they press submit, Sage Pay does all the work and uh, takes the money from the card and puts it into our bank account the following day. So once all that's done, that's very good. So now you're hoping that your website is fully functional and it starts, it starts receiving orders. Well, all very good. But once you get the orders, what do you do with them? So, uh, you know, you can obviously write them down on a piece of paper or put them into some Excel spreadsheet. Well, that's fine for if you get two or three orders a day. But if it's going to be any more than that, and if you predict that you're going to get any more than that, I guess that's where the business plan comes in, or the strategy. You're going to have to implement some system, yet more programming. You have to create a order management system so that the orders automatically appear on a convenient console for you to look and to process. Um, and the order management system has to show you in one glance, typically, the, you know, the orders that you have processed, the ones that you still need to process and take payments, the ones which have been shipped, etc. So there is all that part. Now, all this sounds fairly basic stuff, or fairly, not, not basic, but fairly obvious. Um, but in itself, it does show um, one point, uh, illustrates uh, the choices that we made and the business decisions that we had to make. Was it worthwhile building an order management system straight from the go? Um, I mean, if we only receive two or three orders per day, then I might as well just stick to a spreadsheet, right? And then just go back to my full-time job and, and just keep this as a side burner. But if you have any inkling that this might work, then uh, they, we chose and we decided that it was useful time invested to create this processing order system. Thank God we did, because the orders started going from two, three a day, four, then 10, then 20, then 30. Now, uh, Lambda Tech, uh, I think last week, we had 350 orders coming in in one day. So that's our current rate at the moment, just to give you an idea of the volume of business that we're doing now.